Hello and welcome to my first tips and tricks to Houdini Python scripting. The first thing that's really important when starting to script in Python for Houdini is to understand how the inputs and outputs for the different functions work. The first main function that you're going to want to understand is the who.node. Now what I mean by that is the who dot node, written simply like this. Now the who module, this right here, is the main module for Houdini. It's what's call it's what calls most of the functions, the nodes, the chop networks. It's the main root of all the different functions that you will most likely be calling throughout your scripting in Houdini and Python. The place where you're going to want to read a lot about this who module is just if you search in any browser who.node, the first thing to pop up will be this who.node side FX. This is where you can see the who.node function and all functions that you can call on it on this class. This is probably where you will spend 80% of your time researching and understanding what to do in terms of what functions to call and what order to do them in to get the result that you're looking for for Houdini scripting. Other who functions can be found on the left here that you can scroll through and filter through. Sometimes it's you'll be looking for something that isn't in the who node. For instance, if you need something with vex, there's a vex portion or um, if you have some use for UI or you need to do anything with the shelf tools. But for the most part, since Houdini is a node-based system and you'll be building nodes with the script and doing node-based editing and parameter editing and whatnot, you'll be stemming off of this who.node for most of the time. So when I am scripting, I have this open in a different monitor just to reference all the time. Now, the first thing that you want, you'll want to know for scripting is how to access this basic node that all Houdini files start with. The way we're going to do that is we're going to define, um, we're going to make a variable for this node. So we'll call it obj level is equal to who.node and then we're just going to call that node dot obj like that and close the brackets now our variable obj level is equal to this so anytime we call obj level we'll be calling this actual node this obj node now what this is down here what I just did is I entered a line in the Python shell you can also enter lines in the Python source editor and hit apply to run things in here and then you can also open up the Python shell in a different window if you want to if you need to. Now once you have defined the OBJ level you can start to do things like create nodes and edit parameters of nodes and other things like that. So let's create a node as we can see over here in our documentation there's hierarchy adding and removing this is where we will add a node this create node function if you expand it you can see further on what each of these um, parameters within this function can do so we can create a node with a node name node type name rather and then a node name and then if it has any initial scripts or any of these other things we can set that. So let's try it. So let's try and make a null node within the obj level. So we're going to call our obj level which is a node and we're going to call our create node function which is right here. Now 
it gives us uh, that same documentation we were just looking at but in Houdini itself so we can see we need to define self uh, the node type name and the node name itself so self is this obj level that's where it's going to be created now we need to determine the type which if you don't know what node type you're trying to create you can just create it in here first so we're trying to make a null so we can create our null right there and then if we middle mouse click on it we can see the object type this in this parentheses is the is the node type so we're going to try and create a null and we're just going to name it test just to test if we can do it there we go we've just made a test null in here from here you can stem and create more and more nodes and start to edit parameters so that's the next thing that's most important editing parameters now if we go back to our documentation let's see if we can find parameters here we go so parm who dot node dot parm will uh, output a who dot parm now what we could do with a who dot parm is we can do um, setting scopes, evaluating it, setting the parameter, setting an expression on the parameter, all from this node.parm. So let's just grab the parm first of all. We can do so by um, grabbing our node, which we can define this code that we did earlier we can put that into a variable so we can call this a test null for instance and then make that equal to our obj level dot create node and the create node function exports or rather it outputs a, n a node a who dot node so now that we've defined that it's created another one right here uh, whoops, my bad. So if we call it again, we'll have a blank one right there. Now, if we call our test dot or underscore null, our test null, that is calling this node that we just made right there. Now, if we want to call a parm, one of the parms of that null, we'll write dot parm and then parentheses. And we want to call one of these parms. Let's just try and get tx right here right and if you don't know what the par parameter name you can hover over the different parameters and it'll tell you their written names which we can see is tx ty or tz so we're going to try and get our tx and we're going to call this uh, tx is equal to our parm.tx so now what we have, we have a variable called tx that stores that parameter. And that parm, this dot parm, outputs a who dot parm, as we saw earlier. And what we can do with that who dot parm is we can set it and set expressions. So let's try setting a value for this tx. So what we can do is do tx dot set, as we saw earlier. We could just enter a value, 0.1. Let's do that. And as we can see, tx has changed to be 0.1. And the, the null node has moved as well. So what I've just done is say tx.set.1. And what that did is it changed our parameter tx to be equal to 0.1. And it moved our null node as well. So as you can imagine, you can call any parameter of a node. And then you can change it as well. Now if you didn't want to store the parameter as we've done here, you could just call everything in one line. So if we had our test null, right? And we wanted to change our parameter, let's try and change ty this time, right? We don't need to store this right now. Say we just wanted to set it. We can further this line by saying dot set and then change that value. Point two. 
So, so long as you are creating the functions in order based on what they input and output, you can combine as many functions as you need. Now the last useful thing that you'll probably use a lot is parenting a node. And that's just simply setting its input. So let's create another one, another node for our input, basically. So let's create, let's see, let's call it a parent null, right? And our parent null will be another node in our OBJ level. So let's create another node. We'll also just make it a null. And we'll call it parent. There we go. There's our parent. Now let's parent our test under the parent. So like this. The way we're going to do that is by setting the test null's input. So we'll take our test null and we can do this in multiple ways. There's dot set input which will give you this instructions to it. So if you had multiple inputs to different nulls, for instance like a subnetwork or an attribute wrangle, you'd want to use this to set specific inputs to be what you wanted. But since there's only one input for this null, we can use dot set first input. And then we simply want to call the node that wants to be that we want to be our parent, which is our parent null. As you can see, we've just parented the way that we wanted it to be. These are the basic functions and kind of tips, the first tips that I've got for Houdini Python scripting. To see further tips, please watch my next video.